Yaimiko is known for her refined and well-qualified taste in the world of literature, which can easily be backed up by her tremendous success that the Yai Publishing House has in the first place. Not only serving as the owner and the acclaimed founder of the Yai Publishing House, Lady Yaimiko also serves as the editor-in-chief as well, overseeing the publishing of books as well as guiding writers into the correct directions so their works can flourish and has been doing this for the last 500 years. And flourish they do, with the organization driving in large amounts of mora and with an ever-growing list of best-selling books. Yaimiko has proven time and time again on how to properly create well-selling stories and above else to create something that the entire world can enjoy long past this degeneration. Hello everyone, I am Sakai Samurai, your guide in the vast land of Tavat, and today we are taking a look at Yai Miko's successful business, The Yai Publishing House, as well as reviewing how she is able to help craft these successful books in the first place. So, without any more stalling, let's get into it. As mentioned earlier, Yai Miko oversees all the publishing that is done throughout the building, and it is seen as the high editor-in-chief of the Yai Publishing House, meaning if an aspiring writer wished to publish their novel, they would need to report to her and to her staff as well, where the book will then be extensively examined and nitpicked, where they will look for the slightest reasons to address changes and will look for errors in the script. Regardless of what the staff recommends, however, the true voice of the situation falls on the illustrious yokai Yai Miko where she serves as the true hearsay on the corrections and finalization of the novel. Moving over to the position of the writer, this process can be, well, stressful, where they could find themselves knee-deep in correction notices and sometimes they could see their book be entirely turned down if Yai Miko so requests. If the book doesn't fall to her standards, then, well, she doesn't stand for it. So with that comes a story, a story to remind aspiring authors of just how true her judgment is and that it's often better to just heed her advice than to question it. And after 500 years of experience, she knows what she's talking about. One morning, the Yai Publishing House received a certain unpublished manuscript that quickly grabbed the team's attention. Inside, the book was beyond exceptional, written in incredible detail and perfectly shining as a prime example of a truly fantastic romantic comedy. The staff was quickly pleased with the script, writing it off swiftly as needing very minor touch-ups and was deemed destined as a great success in the long run and they knew it would sell many copies. Except, not everyone would feel the same magical feeling about it. Waiting at the end of the chain was Lady Yaimiko herself, and upon opening the copy, she found herself tremendously uninspired. She let out a long, drawn-out sigh and closed the book, and then she ushered in the head editing team, where they then found themselves shocked with her reaction. One of them would then go on to admit that they asked the author to cover the topic in the first place, as well as confirming that she assigned the topic to them because, well, romantic comedy has been proven as a hot trending genre, and she believed that the author could indeed pull huge numbers because of this. Lady Yaimiko casted the woman a doubtful gaze, and then got straight to the point of her review, not holding back anything, claiming freely that a book should not be bound to the idea of being this top seller in the first place, or to tie itself down into being fit into a certain genre. Seeing that if work was done in this matter, that it would just become another book doomed to disappear when the hype of the fad dies off here in the next decade or so. She believed that while yes, the book could turn to be a great success and would fit well with the trends, she aimed to look even further than this, asking the grand question of why just stop here? And instead, why not create a book that could continue to turn heads for hundreds of years to come? She then ordered the staff to pass the message on to him, as well as to let them know to no longer bother with genre or success, and to simply instead create his own story and to write it well as he should. These words left the author in severe writer's block. In fact, it took him quite some time before he was even able to resume his work, stepping back from it and then of suddenly appearing out of nowhere as if they had had an epiphany, leading them to return once again to the writer's field. This time, they brought with them the advice solid and steeled in their mind. Upon returning, the editing staff was completely in shock at the title, and surprisingly enough, even Yaimiko herself was surprised with the level of acceptance she had for the novel, something that is a very rare sight ever to see indeed. If you manage to impress Yaimiko, you know this book is good. Still though, there was something bothering her, and this immediately terrified the staff, scared to see what she had to say and what was troubling her mind. 
Yai Miko noticed this and then she quickly cleared the air and said that she didn't dislike the work, but she did dislike the pen name that was left by the author, claiming their simple name is far too boring for a book such as this. Sometime later, that same exact author now holds huge, immensely successful book signing events as well as also tours throughout the city meeting their fans. Going by their now Lady Yaimiko approved pen name, Kanonokuji Kenzaburu. And I know I probably butchered that, but I'm trying my best. I, I don't know what that is, but I guess it catches the eye. Yeah, wait, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. You do not question the words of Yaimiko. Of course it's a great name, I approve. But anyways guys, I feel like with that knowledge, it could really help shine on the immensely successful insight that Yai Miko carries around with her. Although she can seem very mysterious and honestly sometimes even untrustworthy, she can still prove repeatedly that time and time again that her advice always rings true, showcasing with her 500 years of expertise with ease leaving many people in awe of, of how does she can approach various topics. Anyways everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's lore video and story showcase. I make all kinds of Genshin Impact related lore videos here on my channel, as well as the occasional parody video and I'll do guides every now and then as well. And if you guys liked what you saw, consider liking and subscribing to my video. As always, I'm Sakai Samurai and I shall see you all next time.